it's clear that we are in an education crisis in South Carolina. Our children have been <laughs> underperforming for you know many years now. Our education system has been letting down our teachers, our students, and our parents for a long time. And COVID really brought a lot of those issues to a head, to the forefront. And so as state superintendent of education, I believe it's my job to help rebuild trust through transparency. Um, and that means having conversations out in the community, you know, as the superintendent of education, I'm not going to be sitting behind a desk in Columbia. I'm going to be out listening to parents in the community, talking with teachers, truly understanding what's happening on the ground so that I can then carry that feedback back to Columbia where decisions are being made. And what, do you, what are some of your plans for, uh, for education in the state? Absolutely. Well, it's clear that we've got to get back to the basics. Um, early literacy is something that is just absolutely critical. If students, if students don't have a strong foundation um, in reading and the basics of reading, they just continue to fall further and further behind. And so I think that early literacy piece is absolutely critical. We've got to figure out how to better support our teachers in the classroom. And we've made great progress over the last few years in raising our teacher salaries to the southeastern average, but there's more work to do. I'd love to see us get our salaries to the national average in the next five years. Um, but we also know from teachers that it's not just about money. They, uh, you know, feel like they are not being supported and heard in the classroom. And I think a lot of that can come back to discipline issues. We need to make sure that our administrators know that we have their back when they have their teachers back. And so there are a lot of things that we can do to, I think, um, elevate the profession of teaching and um, encourage a culture of excellence excellence and support for our teachers by engaging the community and helping them in this job. We can't expect them to do it by themselves. What are your thoughts on curriculum? Are there things that you'd like to see changed uh, or ideas that you have that you'd like to implement? Well, high quality curriculum is really, you know, the foundation of a good classroom experience. High quality curriculum taught by a teacher who is well trained. And so those have to be important focuses for us here in South Carolina. It's clear that we need to focus our curriculum efforts on the things that we know are going to make a difference for kid, kids. Again, I go back to that early literacy to basic math. Um, you know, we don't need to be talking about politically divisive issues in the classroom, we need to be focusing on things that truly are going to make a difference for children and their learning. And can you give us a little bit of your background that qualifies you or prepares you uh, for this role? Absolutely. Well, the job of superintendent is really about three Ps. First, you have to be able to talk with and listen to people. You then have to translate that uh, feedback into good policy to support what is working and to fix what isn't. But then thirdly, you have to be able to work those policy ideas through the process, working with the governor and the general assembly of this state. And so my background in both politics and public policy and communications uniquely qualifies me for this job because I understand what it takes to actually make real change. I, I was just talking with some teachers here in the low country this morning. And one of the things that they said that really struck me was that we've been having the same conversations in education for decades now, and nothing ever seems to change. And I believe that it can change if we have bold, courageous leadership at the superintendent's level. And can you uh, give us some examples of the experience that you have and what you're doing now? Absolutely. Well, the momentum on the ground since uh, primary day last Tuesday has just been incredible. People are waking up to this race and realizing that our education future in South Carolina is on the line. For too long, we have just continued to do the same thing over and over again and think we're going to get different results. And the fact is, there are ideas that are working in states all around us. They are reforming their education systems. And we live in a global <laughs> marketplace now that requires requires us to be competitive, not just with our, our next door neighbors, but with the world. And if South Carolina doesn't get in the game, our children are going to be left behind. And so that's the, the fresh energy that I want to bring to this superintendent's office. Let's look at what's working in South Carolina. Let's see what's working in other states. And then let's build the team that it's going to take to get it done here. Are there any changes in education or delivering instruction that you're particularly excited about in the next four years, things that uh, I guess could be technological or, or um, I guess, institutional? 
Absolutely. So, you know, we've already talked a little bit about literacy. I think there is a strong movement across South Carolina to restore a focus on phonics. And that is how I believe we close achievement gaps across the state that have persisted for far too long. We know now that we are not underfunding education in South Carolina, but we are misfunding education. And so working with the General Assembly to eliminate dead wood and red tape and programs that frankly just aren't serving students and teachers as well, and reallocating that money to get it back down into the classrooms where it can support teachers and students in their learning has to be a top priority of the next superintendent. So those are just a few things that I think would be very important to tackle right away. And uh, what are you going to be doing in the next few days as uh, the election, uh, we approach, I guess, the official election date? We are barnstorming the state, talking to voters in every corner of South Carolina, and the response has been overwhelming. I mean, you can feel the energy on the ground. It's palpable. I think people understand that saving America, saving South Carolina starts with saving our education system. And we have an opportunity now to say no to more of the same and to say yes to the fresh ideas and energy that are actually going to move our state forward.